guys, welcome to Real Talk. My name is Jerry Miller. Thank you kindly for joining us. It's great to be with you on a Monday, a spring Monday, here in Charlottesville in Central Virginia. We have a Commonwealth-wide audience and a worldwide audience here on the I Love Seville Network. We're presented by Yes Realty Partners, Keller Williams Alliance, and one of our absolute favorites, Ally Property Management. Trusted names guys in the real estate game. So much to cover on today's program. I wanna first give some props and, to, and some accolades to Judah Wickhauer, our director. He's our, our infrastructure compass or North Star, the man behind the scenes that just keeps us you know, online and, and, and looking sharp and sounding good. Judah, if you could, let's go to a four shot and let's welcome some fantastic people to today's show. We have, of course, on a Monday, Nikki Chambliss, who joins us what, two, three Mondays a month? Pretty much, yeah. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. She's turned into an absolute dynamite broadcaster um, on this network. She is a, a team leader and just a, a stakeholder with Keller Williams. Yeah. Today we also have Suzanne Real, the property manager and director of Ally Property Management on set. Someone I'm proud to call a friend and one of the best communicators in, in real estate. And I sincerely mean that if you have a rental property. And I know firsthand because I'm a client. Ally Property Management is who you should contact to manage your real estate. And she has welcomed Kari Miller to the show, the executive director and founder of International Neighbors. Correct. We're super pumped to find out about what Kari Miller does. She brought a, a, a swag bag that had an <laughs> umbrella that is a blue skied umbrella. So anytime you're walking in inclement weather or thunderstorms and you look up, it looks gorgeous under your umbrella and stuff like that just warms my heart. Oh. So why don't we do this? <laughs> okay. I'll stop talking. We'll get to Kari Miller. Introduce yourself to everybody that's watching the show. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Kari Miller. As Jerry said, I am the founder and executive executive director of International Neighbors. And the mission of International Neighbors is to equip newcomers who are refugees and SIVs with the network and skills needed to thrive, not just to survive in Charlottesville. And so one of the many things that I love about Seville is this population that we get to work with. And thanks to Suzanne, we get to work even more closely with the greater community. So happy to be here to talk about the organization and these neighbors. She has absolutely, Suzanne has, sung your praises. And I don't want to steal your thunder. First, introduce yourself, Suzanne, to everyone that's watching the show. And then second, offer some perspective of, of, of international neighbors and why they mean so much to you. Sure. So um, my company has been in, uh, we've had been operating for about two years. And uh, I'm very excited every day. I love my work love working with people, love working with folks like Kari, and certainly Jerry and Nikki, both clients of ours, and that's mm -hmm. very exciting. Love growing the business, getting to meet people. Um, but as, as one looks out at the community, there is definitely this need and need to, to help folks. And that's where Kari came into view and uh, into our world. Um, Two times, actually. One time I met her when she was coming to look at one of our properties. And the second time when an actual client of ours had already connected with Kari, and he was determined to get an international neighbor's family into that unit. And so that was really when we became best friends. And, and uh, I've talked almost me. daily now, I think, for the past couple of months. Oh, <laughs> very nice. Oh Besties gosh. over here. Yeah. Yeah. And if yeah, I could sing kidding. her praises a bit, not only have you been able to house four families, but that is 29 individuals who would otherwise still be in a hotel um, going on nine, ten months. So thank you. Thank you for that, for equipping folks with what they need. Everyone needs a home, right? That's Absolutely. Amazing. And we thank you for opening those doors. Absolutely. Yes. Oh my goodness. So I have a question for you because you mentioned that you work with refugees and SIVs? Correct. What does SIV mean? Thank you for asking that. Many people may not know that SIV stands for Special Immigrant Visa Holder. Oh, okay. And these are folks from Afghanistan or Iraq who worked with our military overseas in those countries. And so when folks get invited by the government, as all refugees are, um, there's a lot of speculation 
Refugees don't come from Mexico. They don't come from Norway, where there's never been a war, for example. Refugees come from Syria, from the Congo, other places in the world that you can only imagine just the worst of the worst occurring. So the folks who get resettled to Charlottesville, less than 1% of refugees worldwide get resettled. And so they really are the cream of the crop. And they, SIVs um, not only are new neighbors, but also complete war heroes because they yes. did work alongside the U.S. troops. That's amazing. Yeah. So Absolutely. We're really and that happy. means a lot to you. It, it really does. And it's really, it's quite closely related to what I had been training to do in the Air Force, being a linguist. And um, so it's very near and dear to my heart. Um, and truly, some of my instructors were probably at one point in their careers SIV. Right. holders. Um, so right, right. like truly the people who trained me and um, were, you know, my, my school family there in Monterey with studying that I, it would surprise me if they were not. Cause I know some of them could not go back home if they wanted. Of course. Um, so yeah. And we and have about are, 300 families here in Charlottesville who wow. could not go home yes. to, to those places because they, they are known to be allies for America. And I tell you what, I hope everyone listening to the show can meet these remarkable people because they truly are the most patriotic folks that you could ever meet. Um, when we first get a referral, one of the first things we do is bring a welcome bucket with a, a first aid kit and different things for the home, but the most prized possession is that American flag. And the only time that one person was disappointed was that it was too small. I want a big <laughs> American flag. I mean, they truly are are the most patriotic people that you'll ever meet. That's amazing. That's we'll welcome wonderful. our friends from NBC 29 to the program. We have uh, folks at uh, WINA watching the show. Neil Williamson, hello. Bill McChenzie, hello. Um, one of the common themes we talk about on the show is the um, housing shortage and, and, and the fact that we need to figure out how to create more inventory in the region. And we're all in that space in one way or another. Can we highlight, and Suzanne, why don't we start with you here? Um, it's expensive to live here. We know that. Um, more we need more, more inventory. <laughs> we know that. Put in perspective through your work with Allied Property Management, you know, any themes along this topic point and, and, and why yeah. doing property management and putting people in homes is so important to you and means so much to you when, when you see at I mean, you work with someone from International Neighbors. You saw some photos. I can't wait to see those pictures. And they are so happy, and you helped make that happen. Um, so definitely the trends are there's such a, a shortage. I can say statistically that um, just this weekend I put two properties out there, and within two days I have 30 people interested in one property. It's in Fluvanna where we know there's a huge shortage. It, there's a three-bedroom house, beautiful piece of land, and um, over 30 people, and even there were five more this morning. People want to see it. I set one appointment, and people are rushing out there. Um, then there's a place in the city on Cleveland, and same thing, we have about 20 people interested in, in the place, just because now is such prime time, too, when students are shifting around. And uh, um, so, yes, there's a, a huge shortage. I am presently also talking with two folks who are working on builds for new housing where there's a structure on the property that they're going to knock down and put up. One of them is going to be 23 units and another one is going to be 32 units. And I'm talking with these prospective clients um, in the build stage working out financials for those there is a huge need, and um, and I think that some owners um, with the cash are able to look at that and say, here's a good opportunity for all of us. Great take. What do you see in uh, Kari from your side? Um, everyone needs a house. Correct. You Correct. help make that happen. Well, it's, it's true. And thankfully, the folks that actually own these properties and are willing to to rent to someone that doesn't have a prior rental history. You know, they fled the war. They don't have a credit history. And so thankfully, they, these are folks that are working very, very hard and really two to three incomes in a house would allow success. Um, that's how many people need to work to be able to live here in Charlottesville. But Charlottesville is a place that the government resettles about 250 refugees a year and has since 1998. So these folks make up about 6% of our population and are very much unknown to the greater community. 
and uh, obviously they, they aren't in a place to be able to purchase a home. That is the dream, and I'm happy to say of the 300 families we've helped over six years, we do have 14 homeowners. Um, one that received a Habitat home just this past week after many years of working on it. That's awesome. So that is just, you know, we really need to equip our neighbors to I succeed. I think we should give you some props for that. Uh, okay. The round of applause. <laughs> that is amazing. That is amazing. They are amazing. This is all the refugee community who is just, you know, one of the first things, though, is, okay, they land with debt because the U.S. government requires them to pay airfare back. So you've got a family of eight from Burundi, an $8,000 bill that you have to pay back the government. And they're okay with that. And then they start working minimum wage. And one of the first questions is how my rent is $2,000 and I bring home $2,100 a month. And it, unfortunately, we have lost quite a few families uh, to other states. Last summer alone, we had 16 families that left. And so um, they love Charlottesville and sometimes you know, they, they aren't able to, to live here. They aren't able to afford it. So not only do we need more housing that is affordable, but also jobs that, that pay people, you know, that they can be compensated enough to just, to just have the basic human needs met. Well, what does that look like moving um, from another country to here in that circumstance, not having the credit score, not having the history that's needed for finding a home, but also what does it look like with finding work locally? You mentioned minimum wage. I would imagine not everybody coming over is is low or uneducated at all. So what is going on there? What does that look like for them? Well, everyone that is resettled here through the resettlement agency that is with the government, these folks have been vetted more than anybody that's vetted to become a member of the FBI, for example. And yes. so they are highly, highly I like to say highly trainable. Maybe they are, English might be their fifth or sixth language. We have um, one family okay, that so we just recently okay. moved in. He was a doctor in Afghanistan and will be doing housekeeping, housekeeping somewhere, unfortunately, because... Because it, the training doesn't correct. transfer. No. But no. also, you just said fifth... I'm sorry to interrupt, but you just said fifth or sixth language. I can barely speak one. Right. Um, right. So that alone uh, is a huge indicator of, of high intelligence, high ability to adapt and adjust. And, and so it almost seems like maybe there is room for not only figuring out better housing, but better transfer of employment as well. Absolutely. And I know that's not the topic of the show, but all these things inter interrelate. Right, right, right. Because in order to purchase or own a home, you must have some type of a job that allows for mobile, you know, so increased mobility and also just yeah. to be able to improve and, and get, earn more money so that they can in turn give back. Everyone wants to do that. Yes, absolutely. So what are some of the other roadblocks that they're facing when they first get in, get here and are looking for work and housing? Well, the resettlement agency gets them their first home, which is um, usually uh, a very basic place. And as I said, takes most of the income, if not more. Um, but really the language, you know, we all know language is power. Um, yes. Really, unless you know, unless you're interacting, you're not going to be able to acquire a language. You mentioned that you are, you are able to speak Barely one language. Barely speaking one, and, yeah, sometimes. And as Americans, <laughs> English, English speakers, we're, we're really spoiled to, yes. that we, English is spoken so many places in the world. And, um, Part of what I feel like we do at International Neighbors is to educate the greater community that just because someone's English is not perfect doesn't mean that they're not brilliant. And like I said, they are yes. third, fourth, fifth languages. And and just like an infant that is born, you would not expect that infant to just go and thrive without some type of scaffolding, right? And that's what our newcomers need as well. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. So then are there are there collaborations in place right now to help with that employment factor, or is we it just are always looking for better housing? We're always looking for better jobs. Okay. And, um, yes, if there's anyone out there that would love to have a crew, we just met with Music Today, for example, last week, and oh, so nice. they are going to be hiring a group of 14. And I just I can't wait for that collaboration to take place because that's a company that's established and caring and is diverse, and and that's really what part of Seville being so great has to offer. Well, and Suzanne, I want to loop you in here in a minute, but also what would that look like if someone is listening right now and they're like, you know what, I really want to help with, with jobs. I have some, or I know someone who has some, how do they reach you? What is, what, or who do they reach? Internationalneighbors.org. Yep. Okay. There is, um, you can follow us on social media, reach out via those channels as well as go to the awesome. website and 
Yes, anybody Wonderful. that's ready to be a great neighbor. And, you know, we all have something to offer, whether it's language, whether it's a vehicle. Oh, I just got the best video of um, our 59th vehicle that was donated. That's and awesome. so um, a great couple from the Congo who I think slept in their vehicle that night. They were so excited. But um, anybody that might have a vehicle to donate, a house to offer. Jerry Miller, if I may sing your praises a little bit before I even got to meet him. We yeah. were moving in, thanks to Suzanne, Excuse me. Um, a, a wonderful family from Afghanistan who had been resettled here when the Taliban took over and were in a hotel for six months. And that was, the children wanted to start school, the father, they wanted to begin. Well, can you start there. school if you're living in a hotel? Does that count as a permanent address? Well, they, th there was some ad adaptation with the county. So yeah. eventually, after a few months at the hotel, they started to bus them to schools. But it's not the permanent school district, right? You know, yeah. everyone wants to be settled. I mean, these folks have gone through such turmoil, and they'll tell you all about it. And, you know, they're just so excited to begin the American life, for which they fought and for what they deserve, truly, right? Truly, like they gave up their whole home, truly. And, and while there was struggle there, it was still their home sure. to help out, to support America and, and that vision. And right. it's amazing. So then my next question, Suzanne, is for you. What does this look like as a property manager? Because I know a lot of times there are rules in place that make it almost impossible for someone to rent without a credit score, without a rental history. How have you managed to work with that? Well, it's a great question. <laughs> and, and Kari and International Neighbors certainly co-sign supports the scenario, but uh, rent is covered for a lot of months through the IRC. And please correct me if I'm wrong. IRC for several months. But you did say at one point, when I ask you this very question, like how far down the line are they able to start being self-supportive? And you said it's usually four to five, sometimes six months, and then the families are usually able to support themselves and they're able to get out into the community and get a job. Right, and that's what they want. Everyone wants to be self-sufficient, right? And so, you know, there are haters out there, unfortunately. I was shocked when starting this nonprofit that there's any politics in the nonprofit world, but... Why are there... It, how could there be haters? That is a great question, no, I, Jerry Miller. I don't Miller. understand that. Oh, my goodness. Let me show you my yeah. emails. No, I'm just kidding. No. Um, but it's probably you know, embarrassing to society as a whole, the emails that you do receive, right? It is, it is, and yeah. which is why I love our refugee community so much. Sometimes I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go visit and not only get a phenomenal meal from Syria, but also just have my faith restored in humanity, mm -hmm. you know, because like, gosh, we, we have a tendency as resource people to complain about things that really don't matter. Um, so these folks are... Um, you know, just resilient and eager to give back. I'm proud to say in six years now that we have seven former clients that are now financial donors. And that just that shows awesome. so much that, you know, we don't give handouts, we give hand ups. And they are truly eager to give back. Um, we also try to, the family we just moved in recently, um, I've noticed next door, there's a nice flag that is a Confederate flag right next door. And I thought, well, we're going to have to teach these folks, you know, notice they have pit bulls, and I, I do love pit bulls, and I love Muslims, and I feel like both pit bulls and Muslims people t tend to think are uh, subpar in some way, but um, I am recruiting for Rednecks for Refugees. Um, I would like to think Wait, that okay, we can... Wait, okay, is that actually a thing? Is this absolutely. the new hashtag? Absolutely. Hashtag Rednecks for Refugees, oh yes, gosh. and I first, you know, introduced this... Afghan family of 10 to their new Confederate flag loving neighbor and yes. stay tuned. Maybe there will be some type of a union. That really that happened? Light. Is yes. that true? That's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, because this is what she does to, yeah. to help She's people oh be settled. Oh my God, it's, that it's is amazing. amazing. <laughs> so we had Kari in one of our sales meetings a few months back and it was just incredible and honestly mind blowing the, the struggle that people are moving here with after having served and given up all security they have in their homeland to be able to work with our military then to come over yes they're being moved here but they're being moved here with a crap ton of debt that eight thousand dollars in debt with no ability to get work or housing can you imagine that like yeah right so they're starting out with debt thankfully Kari is here because I can't imagine what it would be like to show up here in a new country not speaking the language or at least not speaking it well and being judged harshly mm -hmm. because of the way I dress or the way right. my skin looks or my accent. Mm -hmm. Like I truly can't imagine. 
Um, and that's all fear-based. It know? is. So yeah. I feel like what we're it's doing is... because you is don't know. Right. right. It's about not knowing. And right. as soon as you take a minute to know something... Right. I mean, truly, that's what it takes is, hey, open your mind up. Not that we're trying to change anybody's mind. It's just your neighbor right. who might wear a hijab is way more like you than different. Exactly. Exactly. So much more. You're on point. You are. Uh, you're, oh, I feel you're a great neighbor. Yeah. 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 You need an umbrella. Um, you sound like a broadcaster right now. Um, yes. She's got a lot of props coming in. Let me awesome. relay some of this um, on air. So this is from Kevin Higgins. He's watching in Greenwood, Virginia. The people coming here through international neighbors come here hungry to work, to succeed, and take advantage yes. of any opportunity. We would be fools not to invest in that energy. Thank you. Um, Kevin, this, is, awesome. what a great this is from <laughs> Dan Pettit. Kari, do you know if all the foreign doctors who move to uh, the U.S. have to go through residency if they want to become a U.S. doctor? Oh, oh they have to go question. from, they have to get the GD. They have to go they way, 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 Scratch. Oh oh Man. Scratch. That, yes, Years. yes. Um, it's, it's really pretty disheartening because this is someone with so many skills, but no, no matter what, America is... To tell, has people just go back to square one? You had a master's degree, oh, not no. here. You're going to get your GED, and you know, I guess it's the price of freedom, right? They're so grateful that they are in a country where they don't have to be outside and and, and dodge bombs. So yes, can and, you put and, that? Can you put that in perspective? Um, the feeling that comes with because we take it for granted, and absolutely. you because we our never country. experienced it. Well, and, so thank you for serving our country. Yes, you're but welcome. freedom. Yes. Can you put that, like, what that means to them in perspective for us? Oh, gosh, I mean, it's it's it really just difficult to to even explain just that freedom, not have not going outside and being fearful. Although I must say that a lot of the neighborhoods, um, it's one of the most frustrating things I think for me is that they've already overcome so much, and many you know have visible injuries, you know, maybe mm -hmm. missing limbs and things. Um, but they they also have been in in neighborhoods where one one man worked really hard, he got a vehicle and the back window was shot out in our neighborhood just right up the street here. You know, some of the neighborhoods that they're able to afford, um, they are also dealing with a lot of unsafe issues. Um, Fourth of July, which we Americans love, um, I'll never forget a couple of sisters from Iraq who were like, that first Fourth of July, they had no idea. They were, they thought it was another bombing. So they hid in their closet for 48 hours until they realized, oh wait, that was a celebration of lights and, you know, oh, wow. sound. So we, it's, it's, it really puts things into perspective because we are very sheltered and um, take many things for granted, more than we even know. Well, and it's a very common thing, veterans who are coming back after having served overseas, Fourth of July is often, while that is technically their holiday, and the same for our refugees who are seeking shelter here and, and ha finding a new home, Fourth of July is really hard. The fireworks is very hard. Sometimes small things like people carrying an umbrella is very hard. Things that you wouldn't think of are can be very triggering, and rightfully so, in a way that is really hard to grasp or understand if you're not part of that community. Right. Um, so then, Suzanne, we're talking about some of the areas where people are moving to and where you're helping find housing for them. Are we, have, are we maybe in the outskirts, kind of like the drive to qualify situation? Is this within the city of Charlottesville? Where are you finding homes? Well, do you know how many individuals you have housed? Yep. How many people that yep. you have? I'm pretty sure that there will be a little, maybe... Muslim girl named Suzanne one day, but oh, uh, there are four, <laughs> four homes in the city, and it is a total of 29 individuals just in the oh, past wow. few months that Suzanne you have Real given the their best. first That's American address. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So you and the, the folks, the clients that you represent, I highly recommend her. What, so sweet. How are you having conversations with these homeowners that originally part of their agreement <laughs> is having a credit score, having mm -hmm. certain aspects? And while I know International Neighbors provides a lot of surety and security with this in ways that makes a lot of sense, some people, I would imagine, are still going to struggle with, hey, but what? Well, you're looking at one right here. I just had a truster. I mean, I'm like, I, I'm going to trust you. Oh, That's yeah. literally what I, I, I trust well, in her. How do you approach this, though? What does the beginning of that conversation look like? Because I also feel like there are probably people listening and watching who this might be life-changing for them, right? Them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So right. What is, and what it's what education, like? right? You educate education, rewards, 
feel good. What do you say to what them? Jerry, like, pretend you're talking this to is me. A, well, first of all, I talk Carrie. Yes. And international neighbors. And just how amazing it is to see... I can now say experience seeing the smiles on the children as they move into the homes. I'll never forget the little boy running through the house with his American flag. And it's just, it's, they're just sights that you cannot mm -hmm. forget. It's heartwarming. You know you're doing the right thing. It's, Absolutely. it's great. It's and but let's say, okay, let's say my house is up for rent. It's not right now, right? Um, which I'm very grateful for. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, <laughs> but let's <laughs> say it were, clients, and you were wow. calling me. <laughs> And, and I'm like, hey, but I'm, I'm really concerned because from everything I've ever learned in being in real estate and my few months in property management that I did not stay in because it was just not a good fit for me, um, <laughs> I, you know, for everything I've learned says that that credit score is the best indicator of having a good tenant. What do you, what do you say to me? But it's not the only indicator. What else should I look at? So look at, first of all, the support IRC International Neighbors provides yeah. and the fact that these folks, just like Kari said, are coming in with life skills. Okay, that's great. So and they they, can, want to they work. are employable. It's just they haven't had the opportunity yet. Right. And because work history is another part of what I'm looking for as a landlady, right? That's, that's right. important. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned IRC. So what does that partnership with IRC look like? Well, IRC is the official resettlement agency. Okay. And so their tag is from harm to home, and we say that we are surviving to thriving. IRC obviously is an international organization. We are a Charlottesville organization. You know, I was a teacher, I am a teacher by trade. Props to teachers, I do feel like they can do anything. And yes, those skills are transferable to all the, right? all the things. Absolutely. And this was oh something I did want to just yes. insert that I really wanted to ask you, what was the beginning of international neighbors because you're getting close to right, that opportunity right, to right. say why you founded this company. Well, I saw the need as an educator. Um, I was teaching English as a second language at Greenbrier Elementary, and we had 23 different languages there. The One of the neighborhoods that our school served housed many of these phenomenal folks from Burma, from Bhutan, from all over. And I was realizing I'm I'm supposed to be teaching English in the classroom, but that they had so many more needs. And I, it was becoming glaringly obvious, those children who are resourced and those who are, are under-resourced. You know, the refugee children, they were, any adult in their home was always working to pay for the rent over the, their, the roof over their heads, whereas those resourced children came to school on Monday talking about their trips or soccer and things. And so, um, really, I complained that some, somebody should do something, you know, for about 10 years, and then I realized, <laughs> dang it. I guess somebody's going to do that. something. It's me. You're amazing. This lady is amazing. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Only inspired by the people that I serve. And so, yes, I just um, Googled how to start a nonprofit. And here we are seven years later, and thanks to Chad Bassett, who did the logo. And, you know, I still learn every day, not only the nonprofit world, but also just about the wonderful cultures that we have here in Charlottesville. That is amazing. I love that. This is just a beautiful story here. Um, question, more stuff coming in right here. Um, so this is from uh, Dan Pettit um, for Suzanne. What is the average monthly rental cost now? Can you break it down? One bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, homes, standalone, and condos. Mm. Um, so Would she's you? a great barometer for this. Do you want to offer a little perspective on that? Sure, sure. Um, so if we go up the line, I would say, of course, it depends on the location and also um, kitchen bathroom scenarios, but one bedroom is probably going anywhere from 1200 to 1350 and two bedrooms 1450 to 1600 three bedrooms probably touching that depending on the location 1550 1700 um, but then when we start talking three and four bedroom homes you're popping easily into the 2000s right now. And uh, we're really raising rent um, right in this time period right now where, where tenants are moving out and, uh, and we're putting rents up to $300 a month. Um, this is for Kari from Aaron Newton. Um, so many jobs are going unfilled right now. Let's welcome them in into these job vacancies. Everyone's hiring. How can we help as a community to get people into the vacancies that are out there? Well, we tackle just about every vacancy that we see. Um, every single 100% of the folks that we're working with are employed. And as I said, often looking for a second or third job because the numbers just don't add up when you come and you have to pay back an airfare bill and 
rent and utilities, you know, they're, they're constantly looking for more work. So um, we've had some very, very great bosses that are willing to work and realize that maybe English is not as proficient. You know, when we all acquire English, it's not just hearing the language and speaking the language, but reading it and writing it. There are four different areas of language acquisition that take time. And so as long as there is an employer who's willing to focus on the positives that, that these individuals bring, uh, then we, we can find eager folks who are willing and able to, to begin employment. Yeah, and knowing one of those does not indicate knowing and having the other. They're, they're not all equal. Correct. That's for sure, those yes. aspects of language, that's so hard. True. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This has come in for Suzanne and Scott Williams. Hello, welcome to the show. He loves what's um, we've got a lot of people watching right now. Um, for Suzanne, do you think the rental increases will eventually stop? Is it sustainable long term? That's a good question. It's a great question. I think that they'll probably level off, but who knows? Who knows? Um, it's certainly tied to the uh, the inventory shortage that we have in this market. Uh, so here's a question from Jennifer, who's watching in Belmont for Kari. What are the goals for the next three to five years for international neighbors? Um, how do you expand? Are you going to look to push the footprint out further? Please offer perspective and and how you're going to grow this this nonprofit. She says. Okay. Well, that is a great question. We are now a staff of two full-time people, myself and Adeline Massa, who Suzanne has worked closely with. Um, hopefully in the next three to five years, we will have a full staff, more full-time people. We do have four part-time folks right now as well. Uh, that's all based on funding. Um, we do have over 200 volunteers who are phenomenal, and they bring lots of different skill sets. So hopefully more of them will bring the skill set of raising money and, and seeing us grow to a place, hopefully being able to purchase our own building. Right now we're renting um, right off of Cherry Avenue and we love the location. But even since the beginning, we've, we've constantly been working with a wait list for all of our programs. And so hopefully in the next three to five years, we'll be able to meet all of the needs that are referred to us because right now we really aren't able to do that just because of our capacity and our financial restraints. So um, as far as pushing it out further, uh, we were on NPR back in 2017 and have requests from 28 different states that they would like to have an international neighbors there. And so oh, wow. there are oh, eight other women, she rose, I like to call them, who have started <coughs> grassroots refugee organizations as well in their states. And so we got together in 2019 and created the Hello Neighbor Network, which is countrywide. And um, we are adding smaller organizations each year so that you know more and more of America is welcoming refugees. And some are welcoming better than others. And so really, we just want to equip our newcomers with what they need to thrive yeah. and also equip the the local community with what they can do to to really just welcome these worthy folks. That's amazing. So I would like to, and I don't know if this is like breaking a fourth wall or something like that, but I would like to ask our listeners and our viewers, if you're listening and watching this in a place where you are, have the ability to type some things, if you think of a, a workplace or an industry or a person that you think would be a good person to connect who would want to contribute, volunteer, donate whether it's a vehicle or a, a rental property a, you know availability for something to rent please please just go in the comments and tag somebody tag wonderful. international neighbors and then tag the person that you're um you're thinking of because i think that would be a really really wonderful thing and doing that right now is going to be the time because if you wait till later I don't know about you, but I'm not going to remember. So when I looked distracted a minute ago, I was tagging somebody that I know that runs a local business, um, like a cleaning company, truly. So a lot of their work happens in the evening, which is a good time for somebody who's looking for that second job. Absolutely. So I think that he would be a great resource. Um, and, and it's also supplies and things like kitchen items, Oh, that's true. Appliances. So what kind of supplies are needed it's, and helpful? Just well, everything? Pretty and much this, everything. The show is blowing up over here. Oh, okay. Kari Miller has got some followers over here and people asking it's questions. So I don't awesome. mean to interrupt. Please, Please finish yeah. your thought there. Um, what was the thought? Supplies. What, what, supplies. supplies. Oh, okay, well, yes. you know, and, and we, if, if, if we had a dollar for every offer of supplies or stuff, which is, is great, and that's why we have forged partnerships with the Earliesville Exchange, also mm -hmm. Twice as Nice. We try to, we channel those 
in-kind donations because we really don't have the space to do that. Yeah. Um, really, it's the, the humanity. You know, all of our neighbors would love to have an American friend. Um, the Great Neighbor Guide program is where we match a newcomer with a local family or individual. And that you have the power to change somebody's life. It, it isn't necessarily a toaster or a really nice coat, you know, um, yeah. which in a dignified way, they go shopping at these community partnerships. But really, you know, you think about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. They need the same thing, right? Physiologically, they need enough food. We have a great partnership with Loaves and Fishes because this community, because of the financial restraints, they are food insecure. And um, so, so basically, everyone has something that they can do. Everyone has something to, to, to offer, and everyone can be a great neighbor. Yeah, so hopefully they will visit our website and connect. Um, so awesome. Travis Hackenworth, Travis Hackworth is watching in Danville, um, and he has this to say. He goes, I know I'm in Danville right now, but there are lots of industries here that are coming that might be willing to help. Morgan Olson, Tyson's, and Caesars Casino. Keep us in mind if you're looking for an employment opportunities. So that's Danville, Virginia, giving uh, Kari exciting. some opportunity here. Um, Scott Williams runs a nonprofit in the area. It's called Camp, Camp for, for Real. Real. You know Scott Williams. I know Scott Williams. Yes, Scott indeed. Scott Williams is the man. <laughs> he I is love the man. Scott he is also a teacher by trade. You know, again, um, he's come he on. The, he's danced on this show. I bet he oh, has. Yeah. I think he's danced. I didn't ever really danced on Jerry. this show. <laughs> he is um, just in one of the best people in this community. He says, I would love to get some international neighbor families at Camp For Real this summer. Perfect. I love what Kari brings to our community. Um, she's the absolute best. So more coming in here. Um, so let's get to Kevin. This is a great question. Um, what is the process to help adapt people um, to learn the dollar? Grocery shopping, installing utilities, navigation of the city, things we take for granted. How do they learn how to adapt from moving from Afghanistan to one of the best cities to live in America? I'm sure these human beings experience fear even though they have left hell. Absolutely. And Great I, question. Very good question. And I appreciate that empathy that this person has just to, we all need more empathy, you know, to think about not only what our neighbors have overcome, but just the struggles while they're here. Um, and. I think it's, it's repetition, it's having a guide. I believe that the latest number for we human beings to master a skill or something, it used to be having exposure to it six times. And I think now with technology, it's something like 19 times. And so really, just like we as infants learned and you know, seeing something over and over and over again, you might have a parent or a, a caretaker teaching you these things. And many of our newcomers don't have that person, right? And so in order to learn the dollar, in order to learn the bus system and other things, other resources that we have, um, it really does take a great neighbor to, to guide them. And in turn, I can't explain how reciprocal the relationship is. 100% of our former, client, former clients are now volunteers, and 100% of our local community that has been matched with a, a newcomer has all, have, they've all said, I gained so much more than I think I could have offered. Um, so really, it's, it's the network of people, you know, connecting each other to our, our town. That's how these folks will succeed and how our community will be better. That's awesome. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a little speechless. I know. This whole thing really gets to me, and it, and it should, and, and it's mind-blowing to me that it doesn't get to more people. Yeah. Um, and so I would hope that everyone will prove me wrong on that. Yes. <laughs> what is the Truly. Here's a great question, and, and Dan, we're going to get to your comment here um, in a matter of moments, but what is the reputation that Charlottesville has as folks are coming to Seville and migrating here? Is it known? Is well, it positive? Is it established? Are we still stuck in the uh, A12 uh, brand or connotations? We are? Uh, somewhat, you know. I think that anybody, anybody that comes here, they, they, as I said, are invited by the government, extreme vetting um, process, and Charlottesville is one of 23 cities, I believe, where the, re where the resettlement agency works. And I know as a teacher, feeling like, why in the world are, are folks resettled here? It's so expensive. Even as a teacher in Charlottesville City, I could never have afforded a house in the city, you know, on mm -hmm. one income. So basically what Charlottesville offers is that we have a public transportation system, low unemployment rate, and medical facilities at UVA. So these are the three factors that 
cities are chosen to be a resettling community. Um, very quickly, they do realize, and it's unfortunate that um, we have lost so many folks. You know, sometimes I say Seaville is that Caucasianville. You know, I love Seaville. I love that we welcome a lot of folks here, but the amount of people that do go to other places, um, it's pretty staggering. But Danville, I often think, where in the USA would folks like to start over and just be able to, to live. The last family that is was from Tanzania that left to go to Wisconsin this summer, they said, we have to move because you can afford your life there. And you can't blame them. It's heartbreaking because you fall in love with these folks and you know the American dream is what they're pursuing. And it would be great if it could be pursued more here, but at least it's a starting point for them. Yeah, I love that, though, that Great you answer. can afford your life there. And that's really well put. And the fact that they're finding other places where they can afford life is kind of amazing in, at this point. Because right. I know it's really hard to find any place where you can afford life. Right, right. So we just happen to be a little higher on that that affordability challenge. Absolutely. More yeah. comments coming in. Um, are you working with K-Tech at all to give folks um, some working skills um, for, for professionalism? Absolutely. We have had folks go through K-Tech for car mechanics, cosmetology. Nice. Um, COVID, of course, slowed a lot of things down, and we're picking those back up. But we, we are really fortunate to have so many great partnerships in Charlottesville, K-Tech being a strong one. Um, Ken Wooten, your dad, oh, is giving us dad, some props over here. <laughs> we love when you watch the program, Ken Wooten. Um, so this is a great one from Grayson, who watches the show often. He's watching in Crozet. How did the pandemic impact both Ally Property Management and international neighbors? Suzanne, do you want to start with that one? Sure, sure. So it certainly changed immediately any human contact when showing a property. They're just out of the gate. And so um, showing property became, I arrive early, turn all the lights on, stand outside, <laughs> answer questions outside. Everybody has a mask. Um, but it was easy to get around that. I can also say I did probably more Zoom or FaceTime Showing. showings. And uh, what's always surprising is how many folks just said, I want it, and, uh, and took the property. I had a lot of students who I would show um, properties, and they'd just say, yep, I'm ready, ready to move in. So um, definitely, it, it stretched technology, but it's good to know. <laughs> and you, uh, you made it work. You always make it work. Yeah. How about for you, uh, Kari? Great question, you know, um, especially when you're interacting with humans that are learning a language. Um, you're a father, correct, Jerry? I am, I and am. So as your child grew, um, you probably, if you had just called them on the phone as a six month old, probably would not have gotten your message across. So, it's true. so much of what we do is face to face. You know, mm -hmm. we pride ourselves that we know our neighbors and, you know, we focus on people, not pro or, you know, policies. And we're really lucky to be able to do that. Um, the pandemic definitely impacted our communication as much because so much of it is in person. And um, we did continue, Adeline and I both are like, how did we never get COVID? I can't believe it, you know, this whole time, oh, you know, because we amazing. did still have to, to visit people and, and, you know, that's a lot of what we, our work is. So, um, but this, I tell you, the community that we get to work with, they're just so inspiring. And, you know, quickly we started making masks. And um, we were able to equip so many more homes with computers and with that ability to connect. And so we got very good at FaceTime and the technology that is, doesn't come easy for everybody. Well, and understanding each other, speaking the same language through a mask was hard enough. Right. It had to be that much harder having English as a second or third or fourth or fifth language, trying to learn English and doing all of that through a mask. Because even right now when we're sitting here talking, I'm naturally going to look at people's lips while I'm communicating with them. And there are things that my ears may not quite get right, but because I see your lips moving, I can, oh, I know it was said. Exactly. So having a mask on during that time, that's definitely a... A, a larger challenge when English is not your first language. Right, right. Yeah. And it, I'd like to implore people who are very apprehensive that, oh, I can't talk to these people. I don't speak Arabic. And it's like, you know, I don't either. But 93% <laughs> of our messages get get made because of body language. And so it's not the vocabulary. You know, if you, on your face, 
you can definitely tell how you might be feeling, you know, even if you don't even share a word. So, you know, a smile goes a very long way. That's universal. So when you do see newcomers, I would just encourage you to say hello and um, watch your body language. Um, this is a great question here from Laura watching the program. Laura, where are you watching in Short Pump? If you could let me know where you're watching, that'd be great. She says, has it been difficult to get funding from the jurisdictions? Are you utilizing success stories to drive funding? If so, can you offer some uh, success stories for the show? I work in nonprofit fundraising myself, and I know it's always difficult to fundraise, especially in a community like Charlottesville that has a lot of nonprofits. Exactly. In fact, I think the latest number I heard was over a thousand nonprofits. And I certainly have had no interest in starting a nonprofit. I really did not. That was not my intention. Um, so I've learned a lot about the space. And thankfully, there are some wonderful individuals that believe, you know, we, we give them the opportunity to invest in Charlottesville through these neighbors. Um, we are taking advantage of as, as much as we can as far as the financial aspects, always seeking for more. So, um, Yes, the success stories are what drives it. And, you know, often it's, it's the most successful fundraising event we had was on a Tuesday, rainy night in February, I'll never forget. And it was at the African American History Center. And it was a soup supper. Everybody kind of brought a potluck and the goal was to raise $5,000. And I had about four refugees there just speaking, talking, telling their story. And at the end of the night, we raised $16,000. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. So Good for you guys. It's about time to do another one of those. We could, we could use a potluck and yes. people coming together. So hopefully COVID is going to subside and we can do that more so in the spring and summer. Oh um, Kevin Higgins and Nikki, I'll throw it back to you. He says, you absolutely set the stage for this show. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. When, truly, and I'll, I say it almost every time I'm on here, it's about knowing amazing people. And, and I met Kari through two of my agents, um, Maureen and John Russell, who, who's actually sponsored our The Breakfast that day to have you as a guest on, um, at our, one of our sales meetings, and it was amazing. And I truly, I think it was a life-changing thing for my agents. We had a packed room. You were able to share your story. We were all mind blown at the challenges that so many people are facing relocating here um, in ways we would have never imagined. And so, and then Suzanne reached out and was like, hey, I'd really like to you know, have Kari as a guest on the show. And I was like, let's do it. Um, and, and there was a lot of back and forth because I already had some of these shows pre-booked out with yeah, she's on top people. of it. You have I it know, booked out months are. in advance. It's the only way I can keep life going. So ah, doing I have a, great a spreadsheet job. for she everything. Is. And sometimes more than one spreadsheet for everything. Yes. Um, <laughs> Ken we should be very proud. No wonder he watches each week. Yes, yes. My dad is very Ken, proud because we love of when you watch Ken. So representing Pensacola, Florida there, I'm just saying. My hometown. Um, Pensacola in the house. Hey. Um, so how about this one for Kari? Are you concerned that um, our area will become too costly? for folks to move here and be dropped as one of the 23 cities that meets qualifications? Yes, 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 I am. I don't know how that the government piece of it is. Perhaps it will continue to be one, but um, yeah, I think it would be such a detriment to Charlottesville. You know, we're so fortunate that we have such a representation of around the world and mm -hmm. we can learn so much from people unlike ourselves right um, so hopefully that won't happen um, but it definitely we have lost some fantastic individuals to other states just because of the costs here you know and go we, go ahead please we will do everything we can to keep I keep know you will <laughs> I know you will and we will too we'll raise as much money as we can so that they can afford their lives absolutely so this one, do you miss um, teaching? Would you go back to teaching? I, no, no, I do not. I, I, there are aspects, of course, but I feel like I am still teaching. You know, we're all teachers, we're all learners. Mm -hmm. um, it's just now I'm, you know, working with adults as well. You know, kind of cradle to career, we say. But um, no, I would not go back to teaching. I would not plan to. Um, it's a rough industry to be in. It that's is. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, we talk about this in mm -hmm. the show. We're both parents. And I was having this conversation with uh, my wife, who is undoubtedly the, uh, the rock of our family. Um, we want our son to grow up into, like, the most diverse community possible. And the um, 
you know, one of the items that concerns us about Charlottesville is the lack of diversity and, and the lack of um, eclectic thought. And, you know, my mom is uh, Cuban and she migrated from Cuba with Mima and Poppy when she was in third grade and came right before Castro took over and was told, put all your belongings in a bag and we're gonna leave at night, we're gonna leave our house, we're gonna leave our jobs, we're gonna go to Miami. And Mima and Poppy became a, uh, a ditch digger and a, and a hotel mate. And they did that for the uh, pursuit of freedom because they were fearful that Castro was gonna I mean, do what he did. Mm -hmm. So they did it right before he took over this country. So I can relate as someone who's grown up, um, Mima and Poppy raised us. Uh, my mom and dad were uh, working constantly and like growing a business. So my grandparents raised us. So I'm, you know, diversity and eclectic thought and, and, and just open-mindedness is paramount because that's the way we grew up. And I just want to thank you for everything you have done um, and champion you. Um, I think anything that makes this community, and Nikki, I know you feel the same way, that makes it as open-minded and as diverse as possible for our kids mm -hmm. is just going to make our next generation even stronger and better leaders. Yes. Um, as, as I've become a dad and a parent, like watching this little boy, um, and you guys can relate, just kind of grow up is just like the best, like, it's not always easy, but it's like, <laughs> like it's the best I thing your in bar the whole over there. Nope. world. <laughs> like, it's the best thing in the whole world Chris. watching him do stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just want him to be, Nikki, in like the best situation possible. Yes. That's cool. We and, need to get him to uh, go over to your place and, we, and play uh, with some of these. Oh my I would goodness. love to do that. That would be amazing. On the playground across yes. and oh in the God. pool Absolutely. across from We've been there. Oh my gosh, that. yes, yes. You are we doing your part. Do Thank you for Thank you. opening your Thank rental you. property this, to this family. Well, you know, and I want to highlight Suzanne because mm -hmm. I 100% trust her and have had the chance to get to know Ally Property Management. And guys, this is as genuine as it gets. Um, she sat, this is your fourth time, I believe, on the show? It is, yes. And, and every time I'm like, this lady is so impressive. Yeah. And then um, it came up and I was just like, let's give it a try. And she goes, you got to trust me with this. And I'm like, I do. And it's worked out. That's and awesome. it's just been amazing. It's just trust is, 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 is paramount here. And you're someone I can trust. Um, Anywhere you want to go with this, Nikki. I, I know I want to Well, so I'm just thinking track. of the, the diversity in our community. We really are so much more diverse than it seems to be. And truly, I don't quite know why that is. I know I had that same first impression when I moved to the area. I didn't know what Charlottesville was. I didn't know about UVA. Yes, I was kind of ignorant and all that. Um, and I got here, and I was like, oh, wow, okay. But then the, the first time where it really hit me that there was a much larger community was when I was working at Mudhouse, and I was at the downtown mall location, and I really we had this group of, of older guys that came by regularly that spoke um, a combination of, of Arabic and, and Turkish and would sit out and play. I don't know what they were playing out there because I was inside working, but they were playing something and smoking and enjoying their kahwa. And, and I was like, oh my gosh, we have more people here. And, and we do. So I think part of that too is just connecting to more diversity. Um, I found a lot of that by roller skating. Um, the, the rec center at um, the Jefferson School has roller skating. I think it's every Friday and Sunday now again. It, it was shut yeah, down okay. a little bit, but it's back and rolling. And sometimes they have like special adult nights on, on Saturday night, which is always very nice because you're not running little people over or they're not falling in front of you, making you trip, <laughs> you know, things like that. But that, that's, you know, that's there, are, there are ways. And I think that looking for that and finding that is really yeah. important. And June 20th, if everyone would mark their calendar now for World Refugee Day and oh, International really? Neighbors, yep, yep. And we will be at Ix Park this year for another celebration nice. of cultures. And so come on out, bring your families. So what does that celebration look like at Ix? Well, last year was the first time we did it there. And we oh, have nice. lots of our community members who are phenomenal cooks and they bring, you'll, you'll have foods from around the world. You'll be able to experience some fashion from around the world. And is this a ticketed event? How does this work? It is not a ticketed it is not. event. Oh, wow. But if anyone who donates will get yes. one of these cherished umbrellas that Jerry is now following. Oh, yeah. Can I donate so, now? Can we all donate now for that umbrella? Absolutely. How do we do this? Anytime, anytime. <laughs> you see the umbrella? It's no. super cool. I mean, it does You're getting one. You're getting one. I'm, yeah. I, it's super cool. So <laughs> yeah. here's, a ch here's a challenging question for the panel um, this is a challenging question this is from Spencer how does the panel think Charlottesville can improve and become a better community 
Um, does anyone want to go first on that one? I think oh Corey's gosh. already got an answer written. I, I feel and like so. I'm trying to make sure it's PC. I think no, I would just no. say two no. words. No, oh, I'm Suzanne wants to go. Suzanne, oh, oh, yes. 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 go. Yeah. yeah. Short, brief, <laughs> openness, and through education. Nice. Mm. Yeah. And experience. <laughs> just to experience these people. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. How about you, Corey? Connecting, um, increasing empathy for folks. I do. One of my wishes is that every single day, if somebody talked to somebody unlike them, like had a real conversation, you know, different in color, different in language, what have you, you'll realize just how much you don't know and how much mm -hmm. learning can improve your own self as well as Charlottesville. No, I agree. Oh my gosh. I just don't even know where to begin with this. Um, I, I think that being willing to do some of the things that like Suzanne's clients are willing to do and, and they're not even offering a discounted rent though. Honestly, I would say being willing to do that would be life changing because mm -hmm. it was life changing for me. And I was a privileged white woman mm -hmm. as a single mom in ways that I truly can speak to because I had friends who were not white women going through a similar thing only a few years later that did not experience the empathy that I received yes. in any form or fashion because of the color of their skin. Um, and it was very, very apparent to me and it was very challenging um, to see that happen. So, so truly, like for me, being offered a discounted rent based on my non-income at the time mm -hmm. was a huge life-changing factor. And look at you now, thriving and I, giving back. See, you know, I try. using <laughs> your privilege to empower other people, I think that yeah. is very necessary. And I'd like to echo that because we have been told more times than, than we've been told yes about these these homes. You know, no, we got to have that credit history. That's what we've always done. That's yes. what we're always doing. Yes. And you know, I appreciate you and your clients being open to adapt to the times. You know, we hopefully are always evolving, and sometimes it's a reevaluation of your procedures. So, thank you. So, why don't we close with this, ladies? Yeah. An, an hour flies by when you're having fun here. How about um, some perspective on how we can find allied property management and international neighbors? And then, Nikki Chambliss, why don't we close with a, uh, a final word um, okay. from the show? which has just been dynamite. Suzanne, why don't, why don't you take the lead on this one? So how we can find them. Yeah, so, allied property Yes, management. yes. So, well, we're out there, and we have a website that is your ally, your friend in property management. So our website is yourallypm.com. Yourallypm.com. Reach out to us, because we are growing by leaps and bounds, and, and happy to be doing it. She is Very absolutely excited. amazing. She is yes, amazing, she is. amazing, amazing. Kari, uh, the show is yours. Well, I just thank you for the platform. I thank you for being open to having folks on. You know, I often say we, we don't, we're not a voice for the voiceless because these newcomers have a voice, but we're more of a conduit to their voices. Yes. You know, these are not the squeaky wheels. And oftentimes that's why we don't know just how diverse Charlottesville is because, mm -hmm. um, they don't have children on the swim team, for example, or maybe, you know, aren't as integrated as we would like for them to be. So I love Seville, and hopefully Seville can be a place that many other people can call home. Great answer. Nikki, you got to follow your that right there. Your website is internationalneighbors.org. Org. Org. Mm -hmm. And then the other aspect of that is I want you to say something again that you said earlier that I just, I really like what it is, and you were referring to IRC and International Neighbors. Do you know what I'm asking? And the difference, yep, yep. Yeah. So oftentimes we are asked how we're different, and IRC is from harm to home, and we are surviving to thriving. And I love that, and I think that's amazing description of how you work together and, and what you do, that surviving to thriving is such an important step in life, yeah. um, and, and truly being able to have people who you said you have now seven people who have gone through this program who now are donors. Absolutely. That's incredible. Who that just four years ago so needed help with rent because, you know, they were resettled from Syria and needed to get some oh. shrapnel removed from their body and so weren't able to start their employment yeah. for about a month. So just that little thing, you know, now just to show... Not only can they use a computer, they have a credit card, and of course, they are, are choosing us to, to be supporting financially. So yeah. It is great. Well, and I would say, so as far as wrapping up this show, 
if you're sitting there thinking, well, I don't know how I can give, you know, I don't know what I can do. I mean, it could just be a matter of sitting and having a cup of coffee with someone, someone who maybe doesn't speak your language, having your children play together on the playground. Why not have an international neighbor's play date? I don't know what yes. that would look like, but um, why, why not? Heck, I right. could bring my teenagers as long as, you know, you don't mind that one of them is going to sit and not talk to anybody. And it's not a language barrier. Too. It's just a life decision. <laughs> when does that and happen? And I support that. my four-year-old won't stop talking. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, you're probably out of luck. Sorry. Yeah, what <laughs> <does> that <happen? laughs> not that no, I mind, but no, I don't you're, have you're questions out of luck. for like, um, um, <laughs> what do the moose do uh, during the day when you're at work, Daddy? Oh. Uh, that was the question Ask on the way to school today. Ask your mom. That's what she gets the answer. No. So, but but giving, even if you just signed up, and I would imagine there's a way to sign up to donate regularly. Absolutely. What if your budget only allows oh. signing up to do $5 a month? Because you do you know what that $5 a month is going to be life-changing? Yeah. If every one of us who are just even watching the show right now sign up for $5 a month oh. together, oh, I, I don't even know. What, do we know what our numbers are like as a general rule for everyone watching live in, the, in this moment? Uh, I mean, last year we reached a little over 253,000 people in Central Virginia, 4 million in the Commonwealth, and 8 million outside of Virginia. Okay, so if we even just divide some of that into the amount of people, let's just say 100 people were, were somehow watching the show today. That's $500 a month. Exactly. And that, that would, would be huge. We could send so many more children to summer camps. We could, exactly. We could make sure that um, people are getting the medical health, medical support that they need. And um, it truly is life-changing. So yes. one neighbor at a time, hopefully we can change the world together. Wonderful. And so it. taking these big problems that seem so insurmountable, that can seem like too much. That can just be immobilizing truly if you're looking at that but if you break it down into what you can do I think what you'll find is there are things you can do and you can make a difference and being a part of the Charlottesville community and the surrounding areas is such a huge important thing thank you guys so much for being here on the show today thank you Jerry thank you. for having us and thank you, uh, Kari for sharing your mission and Suzanne for putting action behind your belief and your passion for this. This is amazing. Yes, Absolutely. Yes. And thank you guys for uh, bearing with me during allergy season. Nikki Chambliss did a <laughs> heck of a job today. Um, I want to highlight Absolutely. that. Kari Miller is um, just a rock star. Um, loaves of bread and feeding hundreds and walking on water over here. Um, <laughs> Refugees. Yeah. Um, and Suzanne Real, guys, is, is someone you can absolutely count on. I, I'm speaking firsthand from this. Ally Property Management is just a rock. Uh, another rock is Judah Wickhauer, our director. And I want to highlight him and what he does for this, this network and our shows. My name is Jerry Miller, and this is Real Talk on a Monday. And it's just been a fabulous way to start our day. Um, I, I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. We will uh, catch up with you guys on the I Love Seville show in one hour and nine minutes. You guys have a good morning. Take care. He's going to tell us when the mics are off here.